welcome to another great episode of Fervently Speaking on the WNBNetworkWest.com. Fervently Speaking, where if it's about fur, we're all over it. And if you're watching this show, it's probably all over you. So today's episode is going to focus on something that I find fascinating and also very important. And it's one of the great activities that you can do with your pet and help others in the process. And I'm talking about the concept of pet assisted therapy. And here to help us understand what this is all about is Pam Gaber, who is the president and founder of an organization called Gabriel's Angels. Pam, welcome to Fervently Speaking. Thank you for uh, having it me. It is my pleasure. We are going to have fun talking about You know about what? This. How could you not have fun? We're talking about people with their pets helping people. There's just not a better thing in the world, in my opinion. Talk to us about the evolution of your organization. Well, as you know, Gabriel's Angels started on accident. I always say it continues, though, with unbridled purpose. Right. But when I brought my one-year-old Weimariner to Crisis Nursery for fun, dressed as Rudolph, and the kids just, <laughs> I know you're an anti handler advocate. Right, and, okay. we, and, we, and we have a picture of that that everybody's seeing right now, <laughs> even as we speak. So, yeah, that is Gabe. So and we people, went. Don't do this to your animal without <laughs> his permission, okay? Gabe's a good sport. He but was. Not every dog's going to tolerate looking like that. You Rudolph. know, I knew I was in trouble when the yeah. line for pictures with Rudolph was longer than the line for pictures with Santa. <laughs> I would have been on that line. But, you know, Pam, I, I think you know this. Um, I'm wearing this shirt today in honor of my beloved Ariel, who um, has gone to the Rainbow Bridge, but she and I were a pet assisted yeah. therapy team, and we had the pleasure and the unique opportunity to be able to work with Alzheimer's patients. We worked with at risk youth, kids that basically had been written off. They weren't like in a mainstream school, but they, they were basically what were considered the bad mm -hmm. kids. They were not bad when Ariel came I love that. and looked with the big brown eyes and said, hey, I'm harmless to you. Please be harmless to me. Linda Francis, I want to thank you so much for being here with us today to tell us about the most important aspects of pet care, which is number one, commitment for life. Number two, spay or neuter your pet. Yes. Number three, microchip. And number four, support the organizations that help to find homes for the homeless. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. And uh, I mean, when we get you. back, we're going to be meeting somebody who can tell us all about Jack Russell Terriers. Oh, I'm sorry. I was having my lip gloss reapplied by a new friend here, and this is Tinker. Welcome back to Fervently Speaking. I am your host, Top Dog Eileen Proctor. And uh, Tinker, why don't you introduce us to your friends? Oh, cat got your tongue? Sorry. So uh, let's review really quickly what you need to know about a Jack Russell before you make the lifelong commitment to bring one in as one of your canine kids. The, the main thing is to realize that they are a very active dog. Uh, they are at the uh, high end, the top end of activity for dogs. Uh, they also are a very long living dog, average uh, 15 years plus. With Jack Russells, uh, first and foremost, uh, they need to be understand the breed, uh, have the time to uh, spend with them. Uh, they do require a fenced backyard uh, because of the fact, again, they are so active. Mm -hmm. uh, and someone who's willing to uh, work with them, train them, uh, highly recommend obedience training uh, with these guys. Well, listen, I want to thank you so much for bringing these guys to visit us today and for educating us about the breed. They are wonderful, but they're not for everyone. And this is your host, Top Dog Eileen Proctor, saying have a wonderful, fun, and fur-filled week. Bye-bye. Please make sure that you've got an up-to-date information tag on your pet as well as a snugly fitted collar and the way that you will do the collar is if you can put two fingers right there that's snug enough the doggy will not choke but it will not fall off. Am I right? That's right. Excellent. Oh. Hey, I want to talk about where your dog should be situated in a car if you're traveling with your car. The best place for him or her to be securely fastened is in the back seat if they're in a harness or in a suitable travel carrier or crate if you have an SUV. Isn't that right? Absolutely. Because um, if they're in the front, they're distracting. Uh, they, they keep wanting to get to you. You're distracted because you look at their adorable little face and want to talk to them. The best place is in the back. And contrary to what a lot of people do, don't let your dog stick their heads out the window because flying debris can hurt their eyes. It can get in their ears. Uh, people throw things out windows. You just don't want your pet to succumb to any of injuries because you decided to take him on vacation. Now this is something that's really interesting because I like to go to the lake or to Dog Beach or to any of those other places and when they get there I'm concerned about them being safe when they swim. 
Eileen, this is so important, especially in Arizona, where so many people vacation in water areas like lakes and near rivers and oceans in San Diego, or even have pools in their yes, own home. Absolutely. Uh, for teaching a dog to swim, there's nothing like a life jacket. It makes them have a greater level of flotation. Um, if you're going boating with your dog, I think you should absolutely have a life jacket on them. If they go overboard and they slip off the deck, this keeps them afloat so they don't panic and they can swim for hours, just like a person can in a life jacket. Gotcha, gotcha. By the way, everybody, now you know it's true. I take a lick in and I keep on ticking. <laughs> What's the weirdest pet you've ever seen smuggled into a hotel room? Actually, there have been two. Um, we had somebody that brought in chickens. They had chickens that they brought in with them. They traveled with them. It was an odd, odd thing. Was that pet chickens or chickens they wanted for dinner? Uh, you know, I don't know. I brought Kentucky we Fried Chicken <laughs> into my hotel room. So, But you mean live chickens? Live chickens. Live wow. Chickens. Yes. Can okay. you imagine? And the other, not so strange, but people love pet snakes, and they have big pythons, and so they don't confine them. They let them just loosen the room and that could be a little scary when um, housekeeping goes in to uh, a little the room. scary <laughs> that, that's when the turnover increases significantly yes. so pet owners do the hotel a favor let them know if Monty your Python is going to be slithering around the room and at least wrap a towel around us so we can dust while he's doing it right hello and welcome to another fun and fur filled edition of fervently speaking where if it's about fur, we're all over it. And if you're watching this show, well, it's probably all over you. Today, we're on location at Love Shack Ranch Rescue up in Phoenix, Arizona. It was actually left in, a, um, in an arena that um, had a truck for his buddy. But he went, a truck was his buddy. A truck was and his buddy. And you heard how he felt about that. He gave a nice little <laughs> snort. Obviously, it didn't have enough horsepower for him. Exactly. Give me a kiss. Here's a good kiss. Little good kiss. 